Hello, this is Chris Cassidy of the Dutchess County Hazmat Team. Today we're going to be going over a new addition to the team's instrumentation, the Toxiray Pro Carbon Dioxide Meter. Toxiray Pro is a single sensor, wireless monitor for toxic gases, in this case CO2. Small size, belt clip, large display. It's a good addition for the entry team to go along with our standard multi-rays. Besides appearance, the most notable difference versus a multi-ray is that the Toxiray has only two keys, the mode and the Y plus key. Startup is still the same, however. Press and hold the mode key for three seconds. The alarm lights and the buzzer will sound, and then the meter will go through its startup sequence. The CO2 sensor is unique among our instruments in that it employs NDIR spectroscopy. NDIR stands for non-dispersive infrared. It's based on the fact that a chemical's molecules vibrate in a particular fashion and absorb light at specific wavelengths. Filtering light at such a narrow wavelength allows for the chemical's detection and measurement. The non-dispersive part is because the filtering is accomplished without the use of a prism or diffraction. NDIR is old technology, developed in the 30s for night vision combat. It was initially classified and not commercially used until the 60s in, for those of you with EMS backgrounds, measurement of end tidal CO2 levels in cardiac patients. I've got three examples set up to put the toxic array through its paces. But first, we're going to take a quick look at the meter's indications and controls and how it is limited compared to the multi-rays. And we'll finish up the warming up. So this shows the type of sensor in the meter. The check mark shows that calibrations are up to date. This shows wireless is on. This area will show wireless signal strength. If you want to activate the backlight, you can press any key, but I recommend pressing the Y key. Any key will start the light, but it also unfortunately performs the key's function. If you press the mode key, you will have to advance through the menus to get back to the main screen. This is one of the limitations that the multi-rays don't have. So again, this is the CO2, shows which sensor is in the meter. Calibration check mark, wireless is on, wireless signal strength, battery strength, data logging is on, and the meter reading in PPM. The sensor's resolution is only 100 ppm. The meter will only change in increments of 100. Max range is 50,000 ppm. Low alarm is 2,000 ppm. High alarm is 5,000 ppm. Low or high will show in this area when an alarm is reached. The word alarm will come up here and flash and will stay flashing until the value falls below the alarm set point. To get to the programming menu, press and hold both buttons. Options are limited versus the multi-rays. The calibration menu only has three options, bump, zero, and span cal. There is no fresh air cal. Outdoor air CO2 levels vary between 300 and 450 ppm. Indoor levels are typically 600 to 800 ppm. A zero cal is done with 100% nitrogen. To perform a span calibration, use this option. Place the calibration adapter on the meter and attach it to the cal bottle and the regulator. 
The regulator needs to be a fixed flow type with a flow rate between 0.5 and 1.0 liters per minute. The taxi ray is a diffusion meter, not pumped like the multi rays. Do not use a demand flow regulator with the taxi rays. The other menus are alarm, data logging, and other settings. There aren't many options of interest in these menus. I'll only cover one here. That's the man down alarm. The man down alarm is the same as in the multi-rays. I'm not a fan of enabling the man down alarm in the multi-rays due to the possibility of false alarms if the multi-ray was put down during, let's say, for event mitigation. But as the taxi ray can be clipped to your gear, I like the idea of enabling the man down alarm on it. The alarm is loud. A low alarm is one beep per second. High alarm is two beeps per second. Man down alarm is 3 beeps per second. I'm going to disable the audio alarm now before we test the meter. In our first example, we're going to simulate a CO2 leak like the Phoenix McDonald's event in 2011. There, a 160-liter uh, CO2 doer had a leak. I have a bicycle tire CO2 inflator, 16 gram size. It's about one ten thousandth the amount, and we'll see how that affects the meter. And you can see it quickly brought us up into the 20,000 ppm range. So we're going to let this alarm clear out. While we do, we'll set up the next. Chemical reactions can also generate CO2. Everyone knows the reaction of baking soda and vinegar. Get the fizzing going on. Any carbonate, though, and any acid will react to one degree or another, liberating CO2, including carbonate minerals like uh, calcite or uh, limestone. In my example here, acetic acid in the vinegar is going to react with the baking soda sodium bicarbonate, yielding sodium acetate, water, and CO2. And that brought us up nicely into the uh, 12,000 to 13,000 range. And looks like we're coming back down again. Final test, as we're waiting for the uh, meter to come back down again, will be uh, exhaled breath. 
The average human exhales between two to two and a half pounds of CO2 per day. Each exhalation is between four to five percent CO2, 40 to 50,000 ppm. I don't recommend trying this with any electrochemical sensor as our breath can affect these sensors lifetime, but it won't affect the CO2 sensor. I'm going to re-enable the alarms once we get below. And this is uh, some, you can see the change in the alarm beep frequency as the alarm goes from low alarm to high alarm. This would count as a functional bump test of the meter prior to entry. So we see we've hit the low alarm. Let's see if I can get the high alarm to go. And you can see the high alarm, the frequency has increased. kind of amusing that the ideal leach of CO2 is 40,000 ppm, yet we expel it out with each of our breaths. Well, I hope you liked this video of the use of the Toxaray Pro CO2 and it proved instructive. I'll see you next time. Bye.